Not a shortstop. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for example, if, yeah. If, if the design of infrastructure was in there and we saw the designs of the rest of the building, we would know what is being you know, Got designed, okay. et cetera. Thank yep. you. Thank you all so much for that update. We definitely appreciate that. I uh, see so we do have uh, any other questions or comments from council. Make sure I'm respectful. Thank you. Um, Cameron Wilgamuth will invite you to the podium. Hi, I'm Carolyn Wildermuth, a city resident and taxpayer. I still do not understand, especially Mr. Kisro, why we are talking about a developer when we are talking about this grant agreement. I refer you to a letter that you received in a packet in November, and I've spoken to this several times, and I still don't have an answer. This was an October 11, 2023 letter from the Chief Operating Officer of the Maryland Department of General Services to Mr. Andy Kitzrow. It was confirmation of funds in the FY24 budget of $4 million through a combination of Maryland Consolidated Capital Bond Loan funds and PAYGO funding as outlined below. And there were two separate awards. Award one was for $3 million and the, the grant was, it was described a grant to the mayor and city council of the city of Salisbury for infrastructure improvements in the city of Salisbury, Wicomico County. Nowhere does it say developer, lot 10, no mention of this. Award two, one million dollars, same deal, miscellaneous grants and the same wording. Reference the supplemental budget. So I've done a lot of research on the internet. I've looked at actual House Bill 200 last year, and it was referenced nothing about Lot 10, nothing about hotel, nothing about a developer. Uh, last night, I looked up the summary of FY 2024 capital budget as enacted, and there's a line item on here for $4 million. And it's to the city of Salisbury, infrastructure improvements. Now I look at a lot of other projects on here and all the other projects, all the other projects have a specific thing in mind that they're gonna use their money for. For example, in Washington County, Hagerstown Field House, $3 million. Montgomery County, White Flint Redevelopment, six million dollars. Um, Harford County, Havity Grace Colored School Museum and Cultural Center, a million dollars. If you wanted this to go to a developer to build a hotel, then you must have put that into the grant request because there is a process for getting these grants. And if you go online again, the Capital, the Maryland Department of General Services, for their consolidated capital bond loans, they describe the process. Thank you, you so much, You submit something Wilmoth. online, and they Thank reply you. to it, and Ms. then it Wilmoth. goes to the Board of Public Works. Mr. Damone. Thank you. We appreciate administration's update to us with Lot 10, and we do know that sometimes when the state it generously gives funds. Again, it can be loose. I know there's a couple of projects that's been done in the past. The amphitheater, you know, it was a very loose term, you know, generalized of how they gave it, but we appreciate you all uh, for updating us on this agreement and we look forward to that Wholesale and Convention Center. Short term rental legislation. Welcome, Mr. Boda. Good evening, Council. I am um, just to make sure I didn't hurt anybody's eyes this evening. I made sure I had extra color on my head uh, for you all. Yes. Well, I collect hats, and I forgot to bring a hat on Saturday to hops on the river, and I paid for it. So that's the, um, that's the situation we're in. Uh, so good evening. Uh, we wanted to uh, bring uh, this as uh, a pre-discussion on some legislation we will be uh, bringing forth and to get some input and give you some insight onto where we want to go. Um, so we have, uh, in the process of the post entergov debacle, uh, we've been looking at other uh, software for uh, 
a variety of things, code enforcement, licensing, and some things. And we, we came across the company uh, GovOS, and they uh, offer a solution that, as a city, we have been looking at regulating uh, short-term rentals in the past, but there was a major piece missing, which was the ability to, to efficiently identify and audit uh, these types of, of properties and so they have a unique solution in their in their software that uh, identifies uh, active short-term rentals it'll monitor confirmed stays estimate sales from those confirmed stays uh, it also handles the registration and permitting process uh, in this and it also handles the payment for the registrating and permitting process so this would not uh, create any significant uh, administrative burden on our office and on finance as this would be handled within the, uh, the software. We would also be able to audit uh, the rental sales versus tax payments. So if you're going back year over year and somebody has a significant uh, payment discrepancy, we can actually go through and audit how many times they advertise, how many times it was sold, and if it matched the previous year, then you can um, you, you can address that issue. And then it all, they also assist us in creating some enabling legislation. Uh, so we have placed this uh, cost into the budget. Um, what we are uh, coming to you about is that we will, be, we will begin creating the legislation uh, and ordinances to, to, to enable this. Um, so, uh, so a couple of things on our list is to define what a short-term rental is. Uh, set maximum stay guidelines per stay um, to uh, set short-term rental landlord and unit registration fees, which we have placed in the FY25 fee schedule, set inspection requirements, and then uh, require, you know, one of the things we was mentioned earlier, a short-term rental liability insurance uh, policy of at least uh, $1 million is the goal in the legislation. Uh, the other piece of it was to uh, and this is looking at what other cities, a few cities in Maryland uh, are doing, is uh, enacting a 2 to 3% uh, short-term rental per transaction tax. Um, notice I did not say hotel tax or lodging tax, because uh, there, there is already a hotel tax in Wacomico County, but Wacomico County is not taxing short-term rentals. They're not requiring that. Um, so, but we're going to dig into that piece to see what we're allowed to do. Um, we've uh, spoke with uh, Senator Carroza uh, this morning, and we're going to partner with her and Wayne Hartman, who, again, represent a resort town, and they've been working on this issue with Ocean City and Worcester County over the past couple of years. Uh, so we'll be working with them. Their perspective, uh, they've got some staff that have some expertise there in the General Assembly of this on what we're allowed to do. Um, so, but we will update you in the legislative process as we get more information. Uh, just wanted to bring this to you. Uh, if you had any questions, concerns, uh, any thoughts, um, you know, I'm always open uh, for, for suggestions and phone calls. Absolutely. Well, uh, we appreciate you for. We appreciate you for um, for looking into another revenue source for the city that you know other cities around us are are already implementing or are in the process of doing. The only question I have, which is very short, um, I, I like the the plus seventy five or little over seventy five thousand dollars that we'll coop, recoup from this, or approximately. How did you come up with the hundred thousand dollars in revenue? So that is uh, estimating if there's a. Uh if there's a 3% tax, it could be 2 or 3%, depending on what the state allows. Um, it's, it's based on uh, how many stays, uh, compliance percentage. Uh, we, we, the uh, software company uh, sent us a, an Excel spreadsheet that kind of like has all these in there. So you can play around with the numbers and stuff. So we, you know, we estimate uh, from their scrub, uh, they saw about 125 rentals. Now, they didn't do a deep scrub. Like, there's literally 50 or more websites that people advertise short-term rentals on. Uh, so, you know, uh, so that's where that comes in. Uh, the registration process, uh, by our estimates from what we've looked at, 
uh, will cover the cost of the software. So the if we did a short-term rental transaction tax, uh, that would uh, bring some additional revenue, which my suggestion would be uh, to uh, a, a portion of that uh, be set aside for the zoo. Uh, that is traditionally what, that's what the Wacomico County Hotel tax does. Um, there, there's a percentage of that that goes to the zoo and then another percentage goes to tourism. Uh, but I, I, I would suggest that if it's a, you know, we're defining a, a purpose for the revenue and it's a community asset and the people who do visit Salisbury in Wacomico County, a uh, high percentage of those do visit the zoo. So, thank you. Councilman Shield. Uh, Mr. Boda, do you have any taxes or registration required for the Airbnbs that seem to be popping up in Salisbury? Um, that, that is, is that, the does purpose take of this is because there's nothing that, you know, we have our rental registration, right. but uh, uh, the combination Airbnbs, what we found is there's two. There's people who do, when they're out of town, or some people who, well, we always call them the snowbirds that go mm -hmm. to Florida in the wintertime, there are people who do rent their, make their property available for Airbnb in the wintertime or other times they're not in town. The other is we have noticed that there are uh, people who are own properties that are not their primary resident right. and are, this is all they do with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's kind of like the, the, the two pieces that we see with them. Um, and so then it's defining, you know, that that's the piece that we're looking into. Different different towns, different counties are doing different things. Everybody has a different def definition for what a short-term rental is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we're going to try to find, there's good things in a lot of them I see, but we'll try to find the best solution for Salisbury. I was just amazed when I Googled it for our yeah. area how many popped up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments or questions from? Good. Well, we look okay. forward to. So yeah. So okay. So basically, I'm just looking for consensus from the council yeah, to give us go ahead and continue on the path. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, words out yes. of my mouth. <laughs> okay. Do we have consensus from council to move forward? Yes. Thank yes. you. We look forward to, to that. Okay. And uh, thank you again thank for you. looking into this. Great. All right. So seeing that, we'll move on to our administration and council comments. We'll start with administration. No, I think we had a wonderful event this past weekend, um, kind of breaking in our Unity Square. <laughs> um, I saw Muir getting a suntan out there. It's wonderful. Uh, no, it, was, it, was, it was a really cool event, kind of going from the, the games park through our space at the headquarters to Unity Square. Um, that's kind of this r newly imagined event space um, with all three of those areas, and the weather was great. So I think it was just a really cool opportunity to use that space. Looking forward to using it again upcoming third Friday um, this weekend. And then we will officially have a ribbon cutting once everything is working. <laughs> um, this fountain is working and everything like that. So coming soon. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, I want to echo the, yeah, hop, the hops on the river was great. Um, they installed the uh, hands sculpture today, which was cool. You and I got a chance to get a photo, which was kind of cool. Um, Meet the Mayor went really well last week, and I hope to do that, another one soon. Uh, probably going to do those monthly. Um, so, yeah, with a lot of good information, good exchanges with folks, one of which was with Holly, of course, on the uh, safari deal. But, um, yeah, it was really good, really informative, and I felt like uh, people had a chance to really, you know, express their, their view without restriction and, and have an even-handed conversation. I appreciate the chief showing up and his folks and uh, answered a lot of, uh, you know, simple, you know, crime issues and data-driven stuff. So I uh, hope you do more of them. So thanks. Good, and yeah, thank you for having that. I know the community appreciates that. We'll go, uh, we'll start with Councilwoman DeShield, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, uh, I would request, if I may, from our president, if we could maybe put updates on either the work session meetings or the regular meetings so that when people have expressed, come forward and had questions, that updates whether it's about the scooters, or if it's about the shopping carts, or the update with uh, the trash vehicles, which that was so enlightening, and when everybody was informed, there it brings a lot of anxiety down, where I've brought this question before you, and where did it go? So just giving updates on that. Um, I had somebody tell me, thank you to Mayor 
Taylor for addressing the flooding issue over on 13. I think an update on the flooding issue on Fitzwater Street would be helpful as well. Um, anyway, so that's just a thought uh, that I'm throwing out there. Um, I do say uh, with a bittersweet, I want to thank, it's a double-edged sword here, I want to thank the community that supported Hands and Hearts Ending Homelessness, which was a five-month shelter for homeless men in our area. They were fed every night, they had breakfast and lunches, thanks to the wonderful contributions from the community. I have been involved with that project for many, many years. On an uncomfortable, sad note, it broke my heart to have 10, 10 of our men being put back in the woods when I know Ann Street Village has never been filled. And that's not a front to anyone, Muir or anyone else. I know there are conditions, but it is upsetting for me personally. Um, and I am looking forward to, I'm sorry Lynn Bratton isn't here, I'm looking forward to the community players show this Friday night. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councilman Mitchell. And I actually had the clerk's office kind of in their notes and, and, and back to myself to share if there's any. We started that, uh, I think, last meeting, but any action items to make sure that we holding ourselves accountable and, and you know, know we're all individually one person, but if we have the public holding us accountable. So um, I had them take a deep dive into uh, those action items to make sure that we're following up with people. And if administration would like, we can share that with your office to make sure that if it pertains to your office, I'm sure the clerk's office wouldn't mind sharing those with you all. Just if you, and whatever you do with them, that, that is your purview, but we'll, we'll share that with you. Perfect, thank you. Councilman Jackson. It's so glad to see everyone here today and expressing their concerns. Um, I went to this um, City Parks and Rec meeting. Um, had a good time and I, I, I kind of gravitated to a lot of things and we spoke about a lot of important things there and it was one Pacific thing was um, upgrading the lighting in the city park. They wanted to put it on the CIP. Um, and I told them that I would recommend that and I would talk to the mayor and to Andy in reference to that and the whole council. Um, we also have uh, Flag Football League. And they play, and Officer Hitty is one of the, I guess he's the coach or is he the one who actually instrumental in getting this together and um, they're playing at the Waterside Park I do know that and some of the games will be at the Billie Jean Jackson Park I'm not for sure if any other games will be anywhere else Doverdale okay the Wicomico Stadium okay um, and there are grant funding for Doverdale which is program open space um, the Lake Street, we, can, we spoke about Lake Street Playground basketball courts being resurfaced. Rims and new nets haven't been done for a while. The tennis courts at the city park need resurfacing. And I do want to get this out. We have a, um, a person from Fields Up Park and Rec, George Conway, who will be retiring after his 20th year. He'll be retiring actually on April the 26th, which is his last day, but May the 1st will be his retirement day. And I wanted to say that tonight because I know I'll probably forget it next week. <laughs> so I want to thank him for his services to our city. Um, I can remember when he first started working for the city of Salisbury. So congratulations, George Conway, on your retirement. And I hope you enjoy your retirement. Okay, we will also have, we talked about a lot of things at this park and right meeting. <laughs> I love Salisbury planting trees. Um, they want to plant trees at the Monument Park, Chipman Cultural, Boundless Playground, actually. Waterside Park will get flowers. Truist Street will get flowers. Doverdale will get trees, and the West City Park will also get trees. Uh, we also spoke about the mural on um, Route 13 in church. Miraboda. <laughs> they wanted to know if we could get someone out there to reorchestrate the greenery that's out there and make it look kind of like appealing to people. Because, yeah, right now it is weed, so they just wanted to know that. And like I said, they, um, the recommendation for the upgrading of the light is was for public safety and for the habitat that are in the park. 
Chief Monshine, they asked. <laughs> It was a lot, but I documented it, it that we have officers patrol the parks. Um, and I explained to them, we're not fully staffed, but I'm quite sure Chief Monshawn would do the best he can with that. Another thing, parks rules and, and the ordinances. Now, I do remember, and Andy know that he and I worked together for the county. We have no guidelines for parks and playgrounds. We have no activities in our parks and playgrounds because actually the county did all our programming for years. So now that the county has stepped away from it, we were wondering what are we going to do about programming for our parks for the summers. So that was one thing and I asked him, I told him I will speak to James Simmons to get some park guidelines and I know that you should know some guidelines because you were my boss. <laughs> you were my boss with the city. So um, they also spoke about having um, Leslie Wright who was um, on my father's track team when we were young. He has now, he had a track team some years ago. So they want to get that track team back together and involve all the parks and playgrounds in it and come together the all comers um, track team and they used to have it at Salisbury Middle and at the Y High Stadium and we recommended that we get that back together again and start doing that and start playing softball each playground one of the bigger parts like Doverdale, Lake Street, Indian Village which is in the county but we all came together and participated in things so we want to get the kids back together for the summers. I know it probably won't be this summer but we're working on things to, to get our kids instrumental and in being outside and exercising and doing some things constructive. And that is my report from the Parks and Rec. I don't think I need to say anything else. I thank everyone for coming again. <laughs> and thank you Councilwoman Jackson. Councilwoman Gregory? I said, "Who's you know who, who's out in who's out in my uh, park across the street?" And he let me know what was going on, and it was really exciting to see all these college students uh, out there planting trees, which were so are sorely needed. Over the years, we've lost a few of the the larger trees. We lost a giant beautiful cherry tree a few years ago in that park um, along with a couple of others so it's nice to see newer trees getting planted and replaced um, I want to put a plug in for the uh, zoo stampede and five uh, 5k uh, run walk over at the zoo this weekend for Earth Day and they're also having an Earth Day celebration the zoo stampede starts at 9 and then the Earth Day celebration starts at 10 a.m. and uh, so, you know, make, it, make your way over to the park. There's a lot of good stuff going on this, this weekend uh, for Earth Day. Um, I would like to know when we're going to be seeing the CIP because we have not seen that yet. Normally we see it in February, and it, it, we've got budget coming up very, very quickly. Um, and I would like to know when we're going to be able to see that because that takes a lot of, that's a lot of information to take in and to go through. Um, so I know that you guys have been working diligently on it and just wrapped up. I would like to know, you know when we're going to be able to get that. Um, I also attended, now it's not an official committee for the city, um, but I attended the, um, the uh, LHIC meeting, uh, which uh, is a group of organizations and um, uh, partners who are working together to improve the health in our community. Um, there was a really, really great presentation um, at that meeting. Um, it was uh, the, a health equity framework pr uh, presentation and prior to, prioritization um, put together by one of the interns at the health department. And it was just an amazing amount of information. Um, so I've asked for a copy of that so we can get that disseminated out into the public because there's a lot of really good things that we could be doing to improve health outcomes in our community. Um, and that is it for me. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. And Council Vice President. A 
Good evening. What a productive meeting this evening, I have to say. Um, I am glad to see that the mayor did hold and host a very, it seemed very productive meet and greet. That was, it seemed like it was fantastic. I hope you felt felt it was. I, I, good, good, good. It was really nice. Um, I'm sure there'll be more, um, and that'll be a really good thing, because I think people really want to talk to you directly. You know, they want to get to know the city on, a, on that personal level, and I think it was fantastic. Uh, a couple comments. I want to come around the loop about it and maybe the next work section. I did hear back from Salisbury University in regards to Shoemaker Pond, but I'm hearing some, um, like maybe some different narrative about how to proceed with the pond. But I do have this group at SU ready to do research on the pond. And so maybe we can have a broader discussion uh, at the next work session about it. Um, and. Um, I do, I've already sent Mary an email about a field trip this weekend um, in regards to going to Spring Chase. I want to take a picture of every lamppost. I do because we had an issue in my development with lampposts. Every lamppost, every light, and Edgewater in the beginning, and that the Edgewater is a city street. In the beginning, it takes up my full uh, Honda R RV. It takes, I mean, it, it will swallow it if I don't go in the other lane and around it. So, uh, but I do want to follow up with that for sure, for sure. Um, and, um, and legal to follow up on the uh, safari at the quarry. Uh, I just feel very strongly about that. I understand that some of the uh, paleo may run under Route 13 or whatever. They have particular barriers. There's, as far as I'm aware, there's no barriers out at the safari at the quarry place. Uh, the last thing, of course, if you are healthy enough, please donate blood and organ. think about being an organ donor, um, plasma. Um, I uh, have been a benefactor of some of that in the last couple of weeks. I've had some significant surgery on my eyes and had to use certain combination of blood plasma and bone marrow up here in my facial area and boy am i grateful and can i ever be thankful for the people who've donated that i i just don't even know how to express those express that gratitude thank That's you it. Uh, I appreciate all my fellow council members for detailing some of the things that have happened in our community, um, which is great because it leads me not not too much to, to speak about. But I want to echo that I had a great time this Saturday at Hops on the River. I spent some time out there. I did not get sunburned like my fellow uh, municipal <laughs> <laughs> colleague there, but um, I, <laughs> I did have a good time. It was good to see people enjoying themselves, and I cannot wait. I'm glad we had a very warm day, even though I, I hear rain outside. I cannot wait for the weather to finally break, and we get people outside and enjoying uh, the weather and all the events that's coming. Um, just a few updates. Um, okay. I forgot to mention um, that at my last planning and zoning that uh, one, you know, you know, there's a couple things that were approved and things, but one cool thing is that we're gonna get, we're getting a Chick-fil-A on the south end of town. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, I don't know how I forgot that. I don't know how, you know, that, that wasn't. How dare uh, you? Yes, so, um, yes, exactly. So, uh, I'm excited about that, and I know the the public will be as well. <laughs> I guess I should have started with that. I mean, you guys would have been excited there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to thank Field Ops as well. Um, you know, Field Ops team for. Uh, I, I had a, there was a concern from a resident um, about actually uh, a broken light at Doverdale Park. Um, they uh, they they had the concern. They saw it, and within days, I want to say two or three days, that light was fixed. Again, at the Doverdale Park. Again, a lot of people frequent that. Would make sure for the safety concerns, and that resident brought that out. And then it, it spearheaded into a conversation. Um, it, it, actually, that resident wants to start a neighborhood watch, and I, I spoke to the chief. So again, it's uh, up to us. And I, I love having conversations with community members. So um, I, I pass that information along. I also spent Saturday morning with some members of the SU. United Way team, and I'm a part of the United Way uh, Emerging Leaders, we were down in Crisfield, not Salisbury, but Chesapeake Housing Mission, which provides ramps to a lot of different residents, and it was great to um, see the community doing something great. I did some manual labor, believe it or not, and uh, I had my work boots on, but uh, it was really great, but also made some connections with those SU students, figuring out you know what keeps them there, what's important to them, and uh, I actually got 
some interested in becoming interns for council and had one already apply. So again, these connections that we're making and us having the conversation. So uh, definitely, um, you know, appreciate that. Um, kudos to uh, the police department. Um, uh, I, there was a community concern. I, I spoke to um, you know the command staff and and you all. Uh, acted very quickly in that, and the and the, the persons at that um, affected site and location felt very um, assured and reassured uh, for the swift work that you all did and the presence that um, that came thereafter. So thank you to you all as well. Um, and with that, uh, this this work session is now adjourned. And uh, at this point, we'll uh, I'll call our special meeting to order. Um, it is now six fifty. Can I get a motion in a second to a <laughs> to adopt this session. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Jackson, Councilwoman Blake, for that swift uh, motion in a second. Uh, can I get a motion in a second to approve ordinance number 28562 for first reading? Thank you. And we'll bring uh, Ms. Ryan up to the podium. You all aren't ready to go, are you? <laughs> Thank you. Ordinance 2862, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury to approve a budget amendment of the grant fund budget to appropriate funds received from Wicomico County, whereas Wicomico County has made authorized disbursements to the City of Salisbury Police Department, SPD, in the amount of $214,189.35, and, and whereas the funding source of this authorized disbursement was the result of the dissolution of the multi-jurisdictional Wicomico County Narco Narcotics Task Force, of which SPD was a part thereof, and whereas all member agencies of the dissolved Wicomico County Narcotics Task Force received an equitable share of assets, called equitable sharing funds associated with the dissolution and whereas the equitable sharing funds are to be deposited and to be used in accordance with the guidelines set forth by the Department of Justice and U.S. Treasury and whereas the SPD desires to use the equitable sharing funds to purchase and customize or upfit for SPD vehicles with proper police equipment and whereas SPD will apply any remaining funds towards future vehicle purchases and or vehicle maintenance, whereas the enhanced vehicles will be used in criminal investigations, patrol operations, and SPD recruitment efforts, and whereas the enhancement of SPD vehicles also improves response times, communications by and between officers, and the overall efficiency of SPD, and whereas Section 729 of the Salisbury City Charter prohibits the city from entering into an agreement that requires an expenditure not appropriated or authorized by the Council of the City of Salisbury, and whereas appropriations necessary to exclude the purpose of this funding must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and approval of four-fifths of the Council of the City of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury of Maryland as follows. Section 1, the City of Salisbury's grant fund budget be in hereby as amended as follows. A, increased grant fund DOJ revenue account number 1050042310101. By 214189 and 35 cents, an increased grant fund expense vehicle account number 105005 by 214189 and 35 cents. The remainder is the standard sections. Thank you. All those in favor of ordinance number 2862 for first reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, the chair votes aye. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 2863 for first reading. Second. Ordinance 2863, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the fiscal year 2024 general fund budget and authorizing the mayor to amend the authorized positions included in the FY24 general fund budget. 
Whereas during the course of the past few months, the city executives have been assessing and formulating position and grade changes that will benefit that will be of benefit to the city. And whereas the city of Salisbury has determined the need to reorganize seven or several positions and revise the authorized position counts in the Department of Infrastructure and Development. And whereas the city of Salisbury has determined that there is a need to change pay grades assigned to several positions. And whereas the city of Salisbury has determined that no additional funding is required to make the update. And whereas to effectuate these changes, the positions, the position appropriations set forth below must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and the approval of four fifths of the council of the city of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury of Maryland as follows. Section 1, the City of Salisbury FY24 authorized position budget be and hereby is amended as follows. The details of which are spelled out in the chart that is in your materials. <laughs> section 2 through 5 is our standard sections. Thank you. All those in favor of ordinance number 2863 for first reading, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the chair votes aye. And it's time at this time, this special meeting is now adjourned.